RPTV Weekly News Show. My name is Victoria and my co-hosts are Fred and Javen. We present news that impacts on Regent Park and the surrounding areas. In this episode, we present the following news for the week of July 5th to July 12th, 2022. Regent Park Community celebrates Safety Awareness Day on June 30th, 2022. Daniels Corporation announces partnership with Access Now to map accessibility of Regent Park. Map pass distribution at the Parliament Street Library will look different starting July. Toronto Raptors Pascal Sia Cam hands out hundreds of laptops to middle school girls in Regent Park. Big changes coming to Moss Park, redesign of park and community centre update. Canada signs $20 billion compensation agreement on First Nations child welfare. COVID-19 and vaccination update. New Omicron subvariant expected to become dominant COVID-19 strain in Ontario. Vaccine clinics in the neighborhood. Events and jobs in Regent Park community. Regent Park community celebrates Safety Awareness Day on June 30th, 2022. Regent Park celebrated the Safety Awareness Day on June 30th, 2022. The event took place at 150 River Street from 4 to 8 p.m. Brought to you by the Regent Park Safety Network in partnership with Toronto Centre of Learning and Development. City of Toronto and Mothers of Peace to celebrate the accomplishment of the Safety Certificate Training Programs from a grant received from the Social Development Plan. The free Safety Certificate Training Series brought to Regent Park residents aim to increase capacity of TCH residents to respond to crisis in their community, increase TCH residents' confidence in actively participating in Regent Park, providing support in community and becoming local champions. The training focuses on three main areas, TCH resident leadership, TCH resident advocacy, and mental health and crisis training. Let's hear what TCH residents Ines Garcia, Lloyd Pike, and participants of the Safety Certificate Training Program have to say. The city gave Regent Park 2.5 million for tenants in the community and it's social development plan where residents apply for those grants to do training certificates or workshops and stuff. We've been doing, we got a grant, we've been doing it for a whole year. I'm just gonna read what we've done. We did CPR standard, we did twice, we had 31 participants. We did CPR emergency, we had 32 participants. Speaking with confidence, we had 38 participants. How to lead a meeting, we had 13 participants. Mental health first aid, we had 41 participants. Advocacy, we had 31. Community trauma awareness, we had 33 participants. And the reason why we do this is because it's, we need to enhance our TCAC tenants for them to have more of experience and, and apply for jobs. So we're here today to do this event and we're grateful for everybody that has participated and come and grateful to the city that gave us the funding. We have a, a Lisette that took our speaking with confidence, advocacy, and how to lead a meeting. She's gonna give a little of what her experience from taking those training certificates. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Lizette Kasul. I'm a resident of Regent Park and I've been living here over 10 years and I learned and, about the safety network certificates and I took uh, how to speak with confidence first. And I learned that um, you have to be yourself first before uh, letting people judge you like, oh, you cannot speak properly. You have ac uh, accent and you are not good enough. So all these words you have to block in order for you to be confident and be out there and be more engaged. And I also learned about um, how to advocate for yourself and others doing that advocacy course, which I really, I was doing this before taking the course advocacy because it's always helping people and make sure they're okay. And uh, I put all those training certificates, all the quality, all the knowledge I got in my resume. And I got a job with, uh, with the both fields. And, uh, I'm really blessed to have that in my resume, just to fill the gaps of the, these 10 years just raising the kids. And uh, so 
I hope, you know, more women come forward and take this course. I'm always telling people to come. You can raise your kids and you can still do something for yourself. That's what we want the women to realize, not just taking the kids to school, come back home. There's a lot to do in the community. There's a lot. Community, the community need us, that's what I'm trying to say. So we want the, the women to come and to, to experience. And I went to Lizette, uh, uh, Oh, group, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, it was wonderful. The women that are there, like a lot of uh, the women, we talk. And now I, I want her, if she can take me, I want to join her group too. <laughs> yes, yes. One of the things that I think that that really shows that when you give residents of TCHC that decide that they want to participate or be a part of something, and they get the opportunity to be leaders in this community. They can show how much strength, knowledge, wisdom, and courage to move forward and be trained to be able to be leaders in this community so that we can help others to do the same. The more that we can empower the TCHE tenants and those that see us do the work, those that are happy to see, oh yeah, now I got a place to go, that they can fulfill a dream, feel confident, feel proud, feel that they can go out and make and get money, and buy a house, whatever. But the opportunity that people like that live in TCHE we don't get, we're trying to make sure they get that opportunity so that they can be leaders in the community and go to school, go to university, and be able to lead workshops like we do. The event had information booths, light refreshments, and workshops about violence risk and suicide prevention facilitated by Amanda Coos a certified mental health and first aid instructor. We now have the Tenant Actions Fund, which opened up about, I'd say, a month ago. And you can apply, even if you're not a tenant representative and you're just a resident, you can apply you know, to do capacity building workshops in your community, maybe a mental health training workshop, a barbecue. These are things that you can do to foster well-being in your community, right? And overall uh, mental health and safety. Um, through the Tenant Action Fund. So you can speak to your tenant representative or uh, maybe your community um, coordinator for Toronto Community Housing um, to get more information about that. Member of Parliament for Toronto Centre and Minister of Women and Gender Equality and Youth Marcy Ian was also invited as a special guest speaker to celebrate Safety Awareness Day. Along with the Safety Network, community organization, representatives, and residents that serve Regent Park community. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, and I hope all of you do, because I feel like I've seen <laughs> all of you and know all of you and your friends and I'm seeing all the faces. Um, my name is Marcy Ian. I'm the member of Parliament for Toronto Centre. And I'm also the, and proudly so, proudly, um, the Minister for Women and Gender Equality and Youth. That's what I am. I had been a journalist for a really long time. That was my job. And the last part of, of my career before I left, I was on a talk show. And I spoke a lot on that show about being black in Canada and being a black woman in Canada and being a mom of black kids in Canada, um, having immigrant parents. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard my story or, or looked me up, many of you may not, but I was born in St. Jamestown. I was born at 700 Ontario, and when my parents came from Trinidad in the 60s, that's where they, they landed. And so they came basically with nothing and they came here to go to school. And so I was born there, uh, my sister as well, she's a little bit older than me, and so she went to Rose Avenue, and we moved to Scarborough when I was in grade one. And um, so I was raised in Scarborough, born in St. Jamestown. And then through a whole bunch of, of school and working and all the things, I landed at CTV. Um, and I was at CTV for 23 years. And another station before that, before I left. But I go back to the social part and 
being on the show when George Floyd was killed. Because for me, that started everything. That started this, right? And that's a part of the story that a lot of people don't know, but I'm telling you here today that I was sitting there on this show feeling very comfortable, um, safe, and thinking, how do I serve better? Because right now, I'm seeing headlines that point to all of the things that are happening in the States, and that's still happening now. And the headlines are saying, but you know, this doesn't happen in Canada. This can't be in Canada. Look at the people over there. Look at the States, how bad it is. And my experience uh, growing up where I did, I can tell you right now that half of the people I went to school with in Scarborough are either in jail or they're dead. That's my reality. Okay, so when I come to this job, I come with that perspective. That's my reality. And people, you know, sometimes look at me and they think, oh, you come from privilege, or you come. That's not true. Maybe now, right? And I own that, but that's not where I'm from. And that's not who most of my lifelong friends are. That's not the deal. Humble so, beginnings. hmm? Humble beginnings. Humble, um, and still, I feel that way all the time. I still feel like the kid from Scarborough. And sometimes, you know, I'm at these tables now, and I so badly wanted to be at the cabinet table when I was asked because I thought, this voice of mine and where I come from and where we come from needs that voice. And the fact of the matter is, it wasn't really there. It wasn't, right? Um, it's not lost on me that it took 20 years in this country to have another black female cabinet minister. 20 years. Jean Augustine was the first. 20 years. Like that's, I'm so, like, like we pride ourselves on diversity and we are diverse as a country, but inclusivity and, and my friend Ahmed Hussein says this all the time, inclusivity is a completely different thing. It's one thing to have diversity, we do. It's another thing to be invited to the dance. It's another thing to actually be included at the table. And I spent, in my former career, a lot of the time, and I, and I have to tell you, and I'm being very honest because I'm amongst friends, I wanted to run sometimes. Like, it was hard. And I spent a lot of my time as a first, as an only, trying to break down doors, always looking back saying, okay, who's coming next? Which kid can I mentor? So many, thousands of kids came through the newsroom at CTV, was able to mentor so many people. I call them kids, but I'm thinking of people like Brandon Gomez. I'm thinking of Kayla. I'm thinking of so many people you see now, they're great, who, who you know, I was able to mentor. And they, they tell you the same thing, but that's hard when you're an only, and it's hard because there's not anybody else that you can go to. And so what I did in my career and what I continue to do now is be what I didn't have. And so mentorship of young people is huge. <laughs> no, this is, I'm so proud to present this to you. Thank you. And, and, and they've allowed me to do this. Um, but this is, I'm going to show everybody what it looks oh, like and what it says. You. This is the Regent Park Safety. Network. It's a certificate of appreciation for you, Mary. Thank you and so it's for supporting and yeah. kindly, see the word kindly, yeah. <laughs> and kindly assisting the Regent Park Safety oh. Network. Thank you. June 30th, 2022. Sereya, come on up, friend. <laughs> come on up. And then we will say why. Yes, yes. You, are you going to say why after? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so here's what's happening. Inez is going to explain, explain why after I present these, but I wanted to present these. So like Mary, this certificate is proudly presented to you, Saria, for supporting and kindly <laughs> assisting. Saria's going, I'm going to kill you guys. Um, the Regent Park Safety Network. Oh, thank and, and, you guys. No, you're amazing. 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 I just want to say I'm so proud of you guys. I could retire now. <laughs> no, this is a certificate of appreciation to you, FOAD, for supporting and, and kindly assisting the Regent Park Safety Network for all that you do and all the times, I'm sure all three of you, you probably think, am I making a difference, right? <laughs> like all of you, right? Am I making a difference? Am I really having an impact? Like who really cares? I, I, I'm at my wit's end but you get up and you stand up the next day and you come back and you serve and you do it with empathy and we appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Dinos Corporation announces partnership with Access Now to map accessibility of Regent Park. On June 30th, 2022, Dinos Corporation, one of Canada's preeminent builders and developers, announced a partnership with Access Now, an accessibility technology company which seeks to make communities easier to navigate for people living with disabilities. The partnership aims to map, review, and rank the accessibility of businesses and public spaces in Regent Park. Results from the reviewing and mapping process will highlight both the successes and barriers that currently exist for people living with disabilities and how they live, work, and play within the community. Map missions are integral to building out and informing the Access Now mobile web and web platform which allows people to search for places in their community that are accessible based on their location and needs. On May 25th, 2022, the Access Now team, Daniels and local Regent Park residents came together for a map mission event to explore the accessibility of places in the neighborhood. Results from the map mission revealed two thirds, 66% of places were rated accessible by residents. A total of 500 accessibility features were observed throughout the community, including automatic doors, accessible parking spots and elevators, digital menus, braille, lower counters, and gender-neutral washrooms, among other things. Since 2016, the Access Now app has been the go-to information resource for people living with disabilities. Spanning over 35 countries worldwide, Access Now's platform is built for the community, by the community, and provides a pan-disability lens on the accessibility of physical spaces. At Access Now, we are thrilled to partner with the Daniels Corporation to vocalize the importance of lived experience of disability within the communities where people live, work, learn, and play," said Mayan Ziv, founder and CEO, Access Now. The accessibility insights we map and highlight on the Access Now app are the collective voices of the disability community that will inspire the future of inclusive, smart city building, Mayan said. Access Now and Daniels created a video to let the community know what the Region Park map mission and accessibility exploration on May 25th, 2022 was all about. Enjoy the video. All right, everyone, I hope you can all hear me. I'm really excited to kick off the Regent Park map mission together. And our job is to do one thing, map the accessibility of everything we see. So today we are here in Regent Park on a map mission. So we're looking at the accessibility of stores, we're looking at the parks and the community centers, and really anything that we come across. And we're asking questions about how accessible are these spaces for people of all different types of abilities. What we've done at Access Now is created a mobile app that allows people to search, rate, and discover the accessibility of places around the world. The motivation is to create a platform that highlights the importance of accessibility through the lenses of people with lived experience. So really what we're trying to do is just create transparency and make it easier for people to just live their lives. Well, yeah, that's got enough room, but that's open. It's not very easy, you gotta back up. In the comments, we can write uh, how the gates at the dog park yeah. were a little bit tricky and not very accessible. Okay. I think what's really exciting about the partnership here with Daniels is that when we started kind of early conversations about how could we work together, it became really clear that we both have this shared interest in community life, in understanding the places that people live, work, learn, and play. The partnership with Access Now is, is an amazing partnership and it really came from expanding on our accessibility program. At Daniels, we created a program called the Accessible Design Program where we really focused on our suite interiors. We focused on our kitchens and our bathrooms and then we wanted to make sure that people within those units have accessible features that they can move around without barrier. So the relationship with Access Now and the partnership with them is about taking it beyond just the buildings themselves and taking it out to the communities. Usually before we go out, one of my friends go and do the mapping. Now I have the app, so before we go I just check the area and that's helping saving time and I don't have to do the mapping myself. What's so powerful about map mission events like today is that you really get a sense that it doesn't have to be every person out on their own. And so bringing the Regent Park community together in partnership with Daniels, I think is a really powerful moment. 
Okay, so I'm I'm marking down that the park overall is accessible. We've seen a bunch of ramps that help ease of access even into the grassy area and everything like that. And we'll go on and do a couple of the other areas. The mapping experience today was incredible to see, to see residents moving around the neighborhood, looking at the different spaces, the amenities that have been created, and really being able to see people who live in the neighborhood provide commentary on that. That to me is the way we need to be changing and helping enhance the neighborhood grow and make it more accessible for everybody. If we consider the power of every single instance in which someone shared an experience related to the accessibility in their own community, and we combine all of those instances, we can start to understand how people interact with their communities. Those insights is really what we hope inspires the next generation of smart city building to design spaces that truly are reflective of the diversity of needs that people have. Our goal is to map every city on the planet. In collaboration with partners like Daniels, we're that much closer to seeing that happen. Uh, I think that this is a beginning and we got a lot of work ahead of us to continue. It's not a destination, it's a journey. And it's days like this where we learn a little bit more about how people engage with their own communities. Museum plus Arts Pass distribution at the Parliament Street Library will look different starting July. The Parliament Street Library is adding some changes to the way the map passes are distributed for free admission to Toronto museums and cultural attractions. Starting July 4th, a new draw system has been implemented for the months of July and August to get your map passes. The new lottery entry period is from Monday 9 a.m. to Wednesday 8 p.m. Just enter your library card number into a draw for your desired map pass. You will rank your venue choices by ordering them from 1 to 12 on a ballot. Customers who are selected from the draw will be contacted on Thursday between 2 to 8 p.m. and must come on Saturday between 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. to claim their passes. But here is Miguel with more information about the new method. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Miguel uh, Vila. I'm a TCSU resident and member of Region Park Community, Region Park Neighborhood Association. I have come to this library parliament branch for over six, seven years now. One of the um, issues that I found in this uh, library that on Sundays, uh, we line up here on the street from 6 a.m. early in the morning to get passes funded by a charity organization at the time was Some Life Financial. Now there is another organization uh, providing the math passes, which, is, which are passes to attend places like the Toronto Zoo, the Ontario Science Center, um, the Royal Ontario Museum, et cetera, et cetera. So in 2019, I went to the Toronto Public Library Board and I said, we can do better. We don't have to line up. Um, so they took my, uh, my deputation in, they listened to my concerns and the merits to have a lottery, lottery system, and then we implemented. And it was successful. Um, and then what happened? COVID strikes, and the library shut down. And, and the program also was uh, canceled for temporary cancel. But now we are back, and now, the, now that two years had passed, the, the same problem uh, uh, came back, which is I, I had to I, I, I witness people lining up at six o'clock in the morning again, and I say to myself, this is not supposed to happen. So let me talk to the librarian and see what we can do to fix this problem. So I spoke to the the, the, the librarian. Um, and we discussed this issue, and we came. And they came to me with a solution. So I have in front of, if you can see it, this is the the plan. On July the fourth, they are going to be uh, alerting uh, users of the library to uh, enter into the lottery system by calling on the, uh, by calling, and um, and on Thursdays they will be uh, giving out. Uh, the, the passes, 
by phone, they will contact you, but you must register during the week. You have, so you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, until Thursday after, to, to, to enter in the, in the lottery system. And that way, you, we can address this problem. See, this is, this is what uh, we have to do as a, as a city citizens. It's improving the system, not to make it uh, an, 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 an inaccessible to residents. We have to make it accessible. So that is the, the goal. And I'm happy to announce that it's going to happen on July the 4th. And um, eventually, this will be uh, an, a standard becoming a standard uh, at the end of the year. So, good news. So please uh, come to the library. The map passes are donated by organization, charitable organizations with the, connected to the library. So they buy in bulk several passes. So for the library in parliament, they give like five passes for the um, um, Ontario Science Center. And those passes uh, allow the user of the library with your uh, library card to access this, these facilities. You can bring your friends, I mean, uh, three children, up to three children with you, and it will not cost to you. That's the, the most important thing because we live, you know, in, in a neighborhood that, you know, is, is improving and we, need, we don't have uh, access to a lot of fin financial resources. So... There you go. This is the best way to attend uh, with your family um, and your children or your, and your friends to go to the Toronto Zoo and enjoy a day at the zoo. Who doesn't want to do that? But it's, sometimes it's not affordable. So there you go. This is the best alternative. And now, and now they have signed a, uh, an agreement with Parks Canada. Parks Canada will uh, allow users of the public library to enter the... Um, Provincial parks, free of charge, and that will be given by the, by, by the library. Toronto Raptors Pascal Sia Cam hands out hundreds of laptops to middle school girls in Regent Park. Taking place at Regent Park's Dix Dixon Hall Community Hub, Raptors star Pascal Sia Cam was part of his third Coding for Champions event, run in collaboration his own Pascal Sia Cam Foundation, Penny Appeal Canada, handing out 150 laptops to girls 12 to 14 in order to help jumpstart their interest in the technology world. It's easy to do those things when you feel connected. The people are awesome, Sia Cam said. The PS43 Foundation, along with the Penny Appeal Canada, launched the initiative Together Back in April 2021 which, along with providing laptops, along enrolls students in a program where they can learn the skills they need to thrive in tech. According to Penny Appeal Canada's website, students get to keep their laptops upon a completion of the program, which is a 10-week course which will teach kids how to make websites and more. In addition to the 150 or so recipients, hundreds more parents and interest onlookers came out to get a glimpse of Sia Cam. I think that having the support of all these people mean everything to me and makes it worth it, Sia Cam said. I feel really connected to the city. Sia Cam spoke about his impetus for the event, which included combating the digital divide in many Toronto communities where access to technology may be limited as well as looking to increase gender equality in the coding space. Big changes coming to Moss Park, redesign of park and community centre update. Big changes are taking place in Moss Park. Essentially, the park and the John Ines Community Centre will be redesigned to create safer and more accessible spaces for all, including the most vulnerable members of the community. The project will include, number one, replacement of the 70-year-old John Innes Community Recreation Center with a new facility featuring a double gym, two pools, and a community space. Number two, Moss Park Arena facade improvements. Number three, park improvements design and implementation. The City of Toronto held an open house consultation meeting on June 20th to inform the community about recent updates and hear back from the Moss Park community members.
So today, between summer of 20, 2022 through to the fall, the city is confirming the vision uh, with the community. And then between uh, for the park and, and the community recreation center. And then between uh, fall and spring of 2023, uh, the team is going to work on early design ideas uh, that are going to be presented for feedback. So you'll be hearing from us about those as well. And then the final design and approvals are going to happen between winter and spring of 2023. And uh, later uh, construction procurement is, is anticipated for spring of 2024 with the actual construction of the community center taking place between spring of 20, 2024 and fall of 2023-27 and then the actual park construction to follow between uh, spring of 2027 to fall of 2027. Uh, the next hand up I saw was Walid. If you would like to unmute yourself Walid and jump on in. Yeah, my question, and, and thank you so much for the presentation earlier, very detailed presentation, um, a lot of thought uh, has gone into it, I can tell, um, and I know a lot of folks in the community have been waiting, uh, have been patiently waiting for improvements to one of the few uh, facilities in their community uh, that they could access recreation, so thank you so much. Uh, for for being very diligent in in the planning piece, my question is more with regards to local employment. So you know we've always looked at a community benefits approach to development, um, making sure that the community benefits and that the wealth remains in the community, uh, and the city has passed the community benefits framework, uh, which outlines you know minimal standards when it comes to local hiring. Uh, what does that commitment look like for local hiring? What's the percentage, right? And that's what I'm very interested in is what's that percentage look like? Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Kathy Vincelli, Manager of Community Recreation for Toronto East York. Uh, so thank you for those questions. You know, we try to promote locally. Um, we want people to come to work for us locally. It's, it's easier for them to work uh, if they live in the area. Um, but it really, you know, they have to go through our regular hiring process. Uh, and we encourage, we promote locally to get those folks um, to uh, to apply. Um, we try to get local uh, residents to um, join our leadership programs and then sort of steer them into our local, into our hiring program. Uh, but it's not something we can guarantee. There's a process, there's a, compet a competition process that we have to follow. Um, but, you know, generally we do like to have uh, those uh, hired locally because they're, they're, they're right there, right? They're, it's easy access for them, and it's great uh, to have them working in their community. I can't provide a percentage. Uh, that's a tough thing to do, um, just because we have certain policies, you know, hiring practices that, you know, make it open to all. So it's a tough question to answer in terms of, of a percentage. Canada signs $20 billion compensation agreement on First Nations child welfare. The federal government says it has signed a $20 billion final settlement agreement to compensate First Nations children and families harmed by chronic underfunding of child welfare. The Assembly of First Nations and plaintiffs in two class action lawsuits agreed to the deal, which also accounts for the government's narrow definition of Jordan's principle. Indigenous Services Canada says the settlement is the largest in Canadian history. The $20 billion accounts for half of an overall $40 billion deal that aims to reform the child welfare system, including five-year funding for the First Nations Child and Family Services Program. The deal must still be approved by the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal and Federal Courts. AFN Manitoba Regional Chief Sydney Woodhouse says in a statement she is proud of this historic milestone for First Nations children and their families. COVID-19 and vaccination update. New Omicron subvariant expected to become dominant COVID-19 strand in Ontario. A new subvariant of Omicron is expected to become the dominant strand of COVID-19 in Ontario health official says. According to the latest epidemiology summary by Public Health Ontario, the BA.5 subvariant has the fastest comparative growth rate of any line age in Ontario. 
The BA.5 subvariant of Omicron has been fueling a rise in cases in the United States as well as multiple European countries. Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Teresa Tam has noted that BA.5 made up about 6.5% of COVID-19 cases in Canada. Health officials still recommended getting vaccinated against the novel coronavirus as it will likely provide some protection against hospitalization regardless of the sub-variant. And now with vaccination clinics in the neighborhood. Regent Park Vaccination Clinic opens on Tuesdays from 3 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. at 40 Oak. Appointments are strongly recommended. Walk-ins are accepted until vaccine supplies last. Both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are available. For more information, please visit regentparkchc.org slash COVID-19 vaccine clinic. Events and jobs in Regent Park community. And now for amazing events coming to the neighborhood in July. The City of Toronto, in partnership with the Neighborhood Group, has launched the second round of the Toronto Downtown East Resident Grant. Resident-led groups located in the Downtown East area can now apply for up to $8,000 to fund your resident-led initiative. To be successful, your project should demonstrate alignment with at least one of the following priorities. Building strong and resilient communities, creating inclusive and supportive community networks, improve, improving spaces and safety through community action. Apply by July 11th. For more information and full grant guidelines, please visit Downtown East Grants 2022, thetrustyhub.ca. If you have any questions about the Downtown East Grant, you can contact Bjorn at the email below, bjorn.wagonpfuel at tngcs.org and Lindsay Jackson at lindsayjackson at toronto.ca. Healing as One, CSI, Second Harvest, and Center of Learning and Development brings you free meals for Region Park youth all summer long. Each week this summer from July 4th to August 26th, food and activity kits for kids will be available at the Daniel Spectrum in the CSI Community Living Room. Participation is free and open to all youth in Region Park ages 5 to 19 on a first come first serve basis. Sign up at the link below. Regent Park Cultural Bazaar 2022 is here. Shop locally this summer and support local artisans and designers. The Cultural Bazaar will take place every Friday until September 2nd. Admission is free at 660 Dundas Street East from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. There will be live music, raffles, henna, multicultural food, popcorn, cotton candy, artisanal products, and more. Hope to see you there. And Fred continues with more events in the neighborhood. And now with more events in Regent Park. Center of Learning and Development Youth Camp from July 18th to July 29th. Registration is open to 15 to 20 years old community youth residents of Regent Park, Moss Park, and St. Jamestown. The program is hybrid and limited spaces are available. Participants get $100 honorarium upon completion of the program. First session will be at 540 Dundas Street East. And for more information, contact them at alif at tccld.org or danjal at tccld.org. Regent Park Film Festival Under the Stars is returning to the park this summer. Join a free outdoor screening every Wednesday at Regent Park from July 13th to July 27th. Make sure you don't miss the block party on July 27th before the film. From live performances to break dancing lessons, we make sure to include something for everyone. The Construction Productions presents the new play X and Da Spirit. The show is a part of the Toronto Fringe Festival and is playing in the Aki Studio in Daniel Spectrum. The show is about two young people's journey as they encounter the spirit of the struggle an entity transmits the knowledge of black resistance through a mural. The show is a celebration of Toronto blackness and activism using music, rap, dance, spoken word, and graffiti. You can learn more about the showtimes, locations, and purchase tickets at fringetoronto.com or by calling 416-966-1062 or follow them on Instagram at X and the Spirit. Are you youth in Regent Park curious about how communities are created, who design and builds the buildings, 
roads, parks, and other spaces. Tridel and TCHC invites you to join a two-day interactive and exclusive event for youth in Regent Park and meet the professionals who help build your city. Participants will receive $100 honorarium for attending, $50 per day, free breakfast and lunch, and opportunities to partake in various activities to win giveaways. Eligibility requirements are residents living in Regent Park between the ages of 16 to 22 years old, limited seats available, and must register to attend. If you have any questions, please contact them at talkregentpark at torontohousing.ca. YEY, BGC, and Daniels invites you to the Self-Defense Martial Arts Program from Monday, July 25th to August 22nd. The girls will be from 6 to 6.40 p.m. and boys from 7 p.m. to 6.40 p.m. And the location is at 101 Spruce Street. Mental Health Matters calling all Regent Park youth ages 15 to 25 years old. See a therapist for free, $225 honorarium, and free halal dinners at every session. Every Friday from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. starting July at Daniel Spectrum, third floor. Limited spots available. For more information, you can contact Mental Health Matters 341 at gmail.com. Visionary Talks, sharing science with the community. Join this fun science event in Regent Park and participate in fun science activities. Learn about exciting science research and get a chance to win raffle prizes. This event will take place on July 23rd, 2022, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Daniel Spectrum. All are welcome. And finally, Taste of Regent Park is here every Wednesday until September 21st, 2022, from 5 p.m. to sunset. Come and join to the weekly market featuring talented local artisans, community organizations, food vendors, and entertainers at the big park. RPTV visited the inaugural day of Taste of Regent Park on Wednesday, July 6th. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Marfra. I am the event and volunteer coordinator for Taste of Region Park uh, from Fred Victor. This event is called Taste of Region Park. And uh, because of COVID, uh, we've been uh, doing it outside at uh, our building, uh, 40 Oak. But now is an opportunity for the community to come back together and really enjoy the food, enjoy the music, uh, do some shopping. And uh, we are proud to bring it back. And our sponsor for this year and many years to come is uh, Daniel's Corporation, so we couldn't do it without them. So they are the sponsors uh, for Taste of Region Park these years. Uh, so this is actually how the community is supposed to come out, enjoy themselves, create social inclusion, social cohesion, and really enjoy the music. So this is a community festival, and uh, we are happy that it's back. That was all for events in Regent Park. Hope to see you there. And now for jobs and training in the community. Last call, are you interested in media arts and broadcast journalism? Focus Media Arts Center is hiring summer community media broadcast journalists for Radio Regent and Regent Park TV. Preferred candidates should have an interest in media arts and be familiar with the Regent Park area. For six summer job positions from July 11, 2022 to August 26, 2022. 30 hours weekly, $15 hourly. You will produce journalistic videos and radio podcasts. Conduct interviews about issues in the neighborhood and gain awesome new media skills. Residents of Regent Park are prioritized. This is the last week to apply. Please send a cover letter along with your resume to info at focusmediaarts.ca. Muslim Social Service Users. Researchers from the University of Toronto, University of Regina, Toronto Metropolitan University, and community partners are seeking participants for a research study examining the experiences of Muslim accessing social services in Ontario. You are eligible if you identify as Muslim, are at least 16 years old, currently reside in Ontario, have access to a computer and internet, and are using or have used social services in the past two years. 
The study includes participating in one-time, two-hour virtual focus groups with other Muslims, completing one short online questionnaire. All participants will receive a $20 honorarium. Recruitments ongoing until July 31st, 2022. For more information and register, visit the link below. And now Fred continues with more jobs and trainings in Regent Park. Thank you. The Anti-Racism Action Program, ARAP, is looking to hire a community healing consultant for part-time. The consultant will lead in the workshop content development and training on peer-to-peer -peer approaches on anti-black and anti-indigenous racism with trauma-informed practices and an emphasis on healing. For further information on how to apply, see the link below. The deadline is July 13, 2022. That was all for today's show. My name is Jabin and my co-hosts are Victoria and Fred. We also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed for this week's show and from our studios at Focus Media Arts Center. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you never miss out on any of our content. If you'd also like more, you can find us on our other social media platforms. And if you want even more, you can look at our website.